Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. On Fridays, we talk about the product owner role in Scrum. We talk about patterns and anti-patterns that relate to ours and the team's collaboration with the product owner. And we've also put together a course to help you navigate that relationship. There's 18 modules, nearly eight hours of tools, techniques, videos, handouts, presentations you can use to help you and your team work better with your product owner. The course is available at bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. All lowercase, all one word, that's bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. And now on to the show, the product owner show. Hello, everybody. TGIF, as they say, today's Friday. And this week we have with us Mustafa Erkun. Hi, Mustafa. Welcome back. Hey, Mustafa. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. So, Mustafa, on Fridays, we want to talk about product owner because, of course, the product owner is one of the key roles for any Scrum team. And we, as Scrum masters, need to work very tightly with them and help them as much as possible. So, uh, we'll we'll end with a good example later on, but first share with us what might have been potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career. I can't recall like specifically that I have in in my you know like the current team, but one of my observation in general is the you know like depending upon what kind of background product owner has. Sometimes you know like the product owner has as a you know, like a super technical background, they, you know, like the, they involve more on the how part instead of only describing the what part and, and, you know, like the getting into how part more and try to give a direction for the, for the team members about how, and I will say it's a bad anti-pattern. So in addition to that, there are many different, you know, like the product owners who has, and, you know, like the, like a waterfall mindset, the, the project management mindset, you know, like they're mostly managing the people within the team, but, you know, um, you know, we are not, you know, like the, no one is man- managers, no one within the team. So, you know, like the, we, we all have different roles and responsibilities. So we just need to bring that into the picture. So um, those are the, you know, like the two common things that I, you know, like the, uh, observe in in different teams. So, and uh, in your experience, when we look at that product owner that has a technical background and keeps diving into the how part of the discussion, uh, what have you done in your career that actually works with helping those product owners understand how they can add the most value for the team? Let me be clear. So you know, like the knowing how part is not a bad thing. You know, it, it, it creates an empathy for sure. But but if you are involving more and if you start to, you know, like the direct team members, then it starts to come up with an end pattern over there. So one thing that, again, I just want to recall from my, you know, like the yesterday retrospective suggestion first to have, you know, like, a, a, you know, like the role-based retrospective, you know, as part of that and ask the question for the team anonymously, you know, like the, what does a product owner do for the squad and organization to get the feedback from all those team members? You know, it's it's a great, you know, like the eye opener and opportunity for the product owner to understand the expectation from team members' perspective. You know, it is it is it is one thing. Uh, and I will say, you know, like, and also uh, in addition to that, if, you know, like the getting good, you know, like the good feedback or constructive feedback from that experiment, then I will bring my, uh, you know, like the uh, coaching hat into the picture as a scrum master, maybe to have some, you know, like the one-on-one with the product owner. And and in that scenario, I I will highly use, you know, like the the, one of the framework that I use my uh, personal and professional development, which is, you know, uh, personal agility coaching framework, you know, it's, it's a pure, simple framework that, that 
create an opportunity for myself to ask what really matters most for me, you know, in that project as a scrum master. And I start to, you know, like to create an environment with the product owner if, if he or she is open to, to, to ask the same question for, for himself or for herself, you know, you know, what does really matter for you in, in your role? And then uh, come up with, you know, some, uh, some short-term goal and long-term goal in, in order to reach that, you know, uh, that, target so so while doing that don't forget to celebrate your success you know because you know like the life is not only work but also you know like the sharing those happiness you know and you know uh, so uh, I did this for myself and I also you know like did this with a couple additional people and one of them was the product owner it went you know like really good so you know um you know so and also it's a path for regardless of your role is you know like your self-coaching you know like coaching to yourself you know like to understand your potential to see where you are going through and 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 you know like the move toward that direction so absolutely uh, i'll put the link to the personal agility coaching framework uh, on the show notes so that people can go and dive in and and learn how that can help them and help them help the product owner of course uh mustafa now we turn our attention to the opposite the mirror image of this which might have been potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with so describe that product owner for us i think like the best product owner that i work with is the one that i work right now i, I just want to say it out so uh, the, the the great product owner is someone who has the growth mindset for sure you know like to to not only looking from you know himself or herself but also looking from you know like the associate perspective to support them and also you know like the great product owner is someone who is easy to communicate and you know like to open new ideas and different experiments so um you know and also as a product owner, you know, one of the role for the product owner is to represent the business in the team. So, you know, like the, in, in that responsibility, so a great product owner is someone helping the team to understand the bigger picture, but how, you know, how, how, how he or she can help to understand the bigger picture, you know? One of the common practices I would say to, you know, like to use the story mapping, you know, to, uh, you know, like to, because in, in each story, you can see the specific feature, what needs to be done. But when you look at those, you know, like the story mapping, you have an opportunity to look at the, the big picture, you know, so, so, and, and also the one that, you know, like the clearly set the sprint goal, to build the relationship between like the sprint goal and product goal and also explain them the business impact, you know, maybe even before the release, when we are having the re release conversation, why we are releasing this, what is the business impact, you know, what is the value that we are going to bring into the picture after we, you know, like to do this release and how those impacts tie with our, you know, like the metrics or overall progress to having that conversation, you know, like supporting the scrum master in that type of conversation, I think is some of the great um, aspects of being an awesome product owner. Yeah, absolutely. I especially like the idea of relating the work that we're doing with the goals and the metrics that we follow. And of course, the goals for the product. I think that's a, a great feature of a of uh, in a product owner and really helps the team reflect and, and bring their creativity, right? Because the team is looking at what the technology can do and knowing what the goals are, they can contribute that. Excellent. Uh, Mustafa, it's been a pleasure to have you here this week. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting to the end. But before we do, share with us, where can we find out more about you and the work that you're doing? Well, absolutely. Um, you, I mean, you can reach me through LinkedIn and also Twitter. So I'm, I'm highly, you know, like effective using, you know, like the LinkedIn. And I'm always, you know, like to trying to learn from other people. I sometimes, you know, like to join different meetups, you know, like different groups to learn more and share my experience. So. Absolutely. And the links will be on the show notes. So, uh, Mustafa, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. I appreciate your time as well. And again, it's a pleasure to be here. 
and and best of luck with your journal journey. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over. But there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. Join us at scrummastertoolbox.com forward slash podcast and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more week full of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.